Jennifer Datchuk is up next. She is Jennifer Ling Datchuk, born in Warren, Ohio, raised in Brooklyn, New York, a ceramic artist who got her Bachelor of Fine Arts in Craft from Kent State University in 2004, Master of Fine Arts in Artisanry. Did you know there's an Artisanry Master of Fine Arts at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth in 2008? And with her husband, who is also a ceramic artist, Ryan Takaba, they have called San Antonio home since 2008. I hope I didn't mispronounce his name. Together, they have established something called Dim and Sum, which is a small line of vintage-inspired modern design porcelain objects for the home. She balances her time between their business and creating her sculptural ceramic pieces, all while doting on their two chihuahuas, Scooter and Francis. Please give a warm Josephine welcome to Jennifer Gadget! Hello, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? I have the voice of a five-year-old girl. When I was practicing my presentation at home, my husband said it sounded kind of sad, and I told him he was being way too critical. So I hope you find the little glimmers of hope in it. But I want to start off by saying, with this quote, happy families are alike, but every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. This photograph of my parents is a major influence for my work. My parents are on the far left. It was taken in the 70s in New York City at a birthday party. My father literally doesn't fit in this photograph. <laughs> and the photographer of this image was probably Chinese and felt that he didn't fit in socially and culturally as well. My work is about conflict as experienced through issues of race, gender, and identity in my family. I am interested in revealing the beauty, dysfunction, and fragility of domestic settings and my constant desire for balance. I view items found in our home as intimate witnesses to our lives. In this piece, two slip cast teapots are in a conjoined relationship, and the hand-built tray that holds them stretches and curls to contain and keep the sweet, suffocating honey it slowly drips. This piece is about divorce. My family has always lived in areas perpetuating difference and separation of one kind or another. This photo was taken in Ohio in the late 70s. My, everywhere we lived, my mother was perceived first as the family's maid, my father's war bride, and everyone's exotic object. My mother has always known she is beautiful. She was told this her whole life, and this most likely shaped her identity. And her Chinese name loosely translates to the equally beautiful sweet plum. I often wonder how I could have come from something so sweet and so bitter at the same time. In these photos, my father seems larger than life, and I found many old photos where he was cut out of the image. In many ways, I feel like it made it easy for me to cut my parents out of my life. And never completely understanding my family's power their monumental needs, desires, and anxieties were completely terrifying to me. On the surface, everything can appear pretty and perfect. Applying makeup can be very gentle and slow process that allows for moments of contemplation. Pot of Puff Parents consists of two hand-built porcelain makeup puffs where one puff is steel wool and the other one has chicken feet and nails. Chicken feet in Chinese culture are an edible delicacy and served often as a family-style dish. Growing up, I used to watch my Chinese grandmother take her teeth out to put a foot in. <laughs> I slip past chicken feet and combine them with porcelain clay coated handkerchiefs to create frozen vignettes of seemingly endless sadness. As a child, I was always surrounded by Chinese ceramics perfectly placed in china cabinets. I valued and prized these objects because they were meant to bring good fortune, good luck, prosperity, and most importantly, lots of babies. I make work out of porcelain clay because of its historical significance in Chinese ceramics, but also it serves as my icon for my cultural heritage. In 2011, through a generous award from the Artist Foundation of San Antonio and a travel grant from ArtPace, I was able to travel to Jinjijin, China, where it is the porcelain capital of the world and where porcelain was discovered over 2,000 years ago. For me, it was the perfect place to go. China, like many places, 
is struggling to find a balance between keeping traditional methods and thinking and modern technologies and Western ways. This picture captures finding the balance between fast and slow. These water hammered, water powered hammers run 24 seven and break up the felspar rock that makes up porcelain. In the middle of the night, when it's truly quiet for a few hours, you can hear these water hammers running and it is considered the heartbeat of Jinbuja. And these are located all over the city. Most of you have heard of this place through the artwork of Chinese artist Ai Weiwei. He employed the whole town and many factories to make his sunflower seed piece for the Tate Modern in London. I couldn't wait to find some, and I never have known what it's like to buy drugs, but this totally felt like one of those situations. <laughs> <laughs> Jindajin has perfected traditional Chinese techniques. These large vases are thrown in sections by two men on a potter's wheel and decorated with traditional blue and white painting. This factory makes many of these large vases, but Chinese people do not own these. They are sold to hotels and businesses throughout Asia. To be able to experience their level of craftsmanship and technique was amazing. This young man has spent at least six months carving this large vase and will probably spend another six months. But that's the funny thing about ceramics, you can work on it so hard and it can all fail in one kiln firing. I learned that ceramic teaches you a lot about loss and how to grieve. I had two months with this beautiful studio view, and to the left of this was a brand new modern high-rise apartment going up. In China, I still felt stuck in between two worlds, even more so when I got sick with a horrible stomach bug and tried to find comfort in the local hospital. The doctor diagnosed my illness as a lack of wearing socks with sandals and careless exposure of one's belly button. <laughs> my limited Chinese made me observe the differences around me, but it gave myself permission to explore the beautiful pure white porcelain and decorative cobalt blue and white patterns that this town is known for. The locals knew I was half. When I would go out shopping, I'd hear them point and say, her eyes look Chinese, but her nose doesn't. I was like, tell me something I don't know. I would laugh and tell them in my limited language my family story, and they would tell me it doesn't matter, you're still Chinese, and they would give me the Chinese price, not the foreigner price for things. <laughs> this came in handy when I would go to the antique market. Vendors would lay blankets on the ground and sell historical ceramics dating as far back as 14th century. These are porcelain shards, and they are said to be dug up from old kiln yards up in the mountains. What fascinated about me about these was these are broken pieces are both priceless and worthless. Broken was one of the first pieces I made when I returned home. I intentionally flawed these small plates and saucers with ripped tears and cracks. I patched their bruises with stitches of decorative floral and patterns. And I hope in this piece and in my work that people can find hope in times of sadness, humor in moments of grief, and beauty in times of despair. Thank you. Okay, now, for your five-year-old girl voice, talking to me. All right, uh, first of all, how does one from Kent State and UMass Dartmouth and Ryan come here to San Antonio? Was it our pace? Um, my husband, Ryan, works at the Southwest School of Art, and that's why we moved here for his job. Okay, and how is it for ceramic artists in San Antonio? I think it's pretty great to be an artist in San Antonio in general. Because we have some young people out here, I know we're artists and want to be uh, full-time professional artists. Where do you exhibit and how can people find your work? My website, jenniferlingdashik.com. If you want to see pictures of my chihuahuas on Instagram, it's dim and sum. <laughs> and I will be having a show at Blue Star Contemporary Art Museum in September 2014. And was it careless exposure of the belly button that uh, gave you this kind of um, That is a whole other Pecha Kucha event, that story. <laughs> um, well, I'm uh, here for that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know where to go from that. And uh, how do you, do, you, do you explain, I mean, some of your concepts for ceramics are a little uh, maybe over the heads of some people. Do you like to explain it to people? Like it's about divorce or whatever? Or do you um, rather they just kind of absorb it? I think the best art slowly reveals a little bit of the artist's life. And I think it's all experiences that we all have and we all can share. 
But I think the more you spend time with, their, with someone's art is when you can see the bottomless depths of their soul in the piece. Dude, that is cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that was great. It was great, wasn't it? Thank you very much.